Almighty Father, once again, we give you praise and glory and adoration. We magnify you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing us before you once again on Mount Zion. Thank you for this wonderful multitude you have gathered here. Thank you, God, for this wonderful lives and, and all the testimonies we have heard this morning. We thank you, God, for this beautiful sanctuary you have given us. Holy Ghost, we pray that now bless us with your word. Open the eye of our understanding. Give us insight by the power of your word. Let revelation come unto us and make us become uh, uh, commanders of situations in our life that the name of our Lord would be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We give praise to him. We give praise to him. We give praise to our God, our Father, our King, and our everything. We give him all the praise. All the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have been talking about the power of God's wisdom. And uh, we have come to understand that it is given unto us. It is given. Because until it is revealed, you cannot receive it. Until it is revealed, you cannot receive it. It is given unto us. So it has to be revealed unto us before we can receive it. And, you know, for it to be revealed unto you, you must be committed to the word. You must first be hungry for it. And then you, you know, you desire it so much that you get committed to the word. Because the proof of your desire is pursued. When you desire something, you pursue it. And so if you desire revelation, you pursue it by becoming committed to the word of God. And so we are, you know, uh, 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 receiving the revelations of God's word so that we will become the people that we have to become, so that we will become the, the end time church. You know, the description of the end time church is so powerful that... You know, no, nobody can claim to be part of that move and be an ordinary person. If you look at the way God described the end time church. But it is going to take the power of the revelation of God for us to flow. Praise the Lord with, with the end time church. But the good news is that we are part of the end time Amen. church. The good news is that we are empowered as the end time church. And like we have said, in these last days, God is going to really display his wisdom through the, the church that will bow the knees of the world, that will bow the knees of the proud, that will bow the knees of those who think Jesus is not real. Because wisdom is going to bring, the wisdom of God is going to bring solution to all the bugging questions and the problems that is everywhere in the world today. And like I said the other time, the problems in this world has a solution in the church. In the church of God, in the children of God, the presidents and the leaders of the world don't have the answer. They are struggling, they are confused, they are just exper experimenting. They don't have the answer. The answer is in the wisdom of, of God. And very soon, they will have no choice but to bow to God. They will have no choice but to admit that we don't know it and we need God. To solve this problem very soon they will respect the church of god so much so that when they hear the church they will salute it because through the many-sided wisdom of god god is going to prove to the world that the church his church is superior to everything in the world the church is not subject to anything in this world praise the lord and that is why god wants you and i to be committed to his word to receive the revelation because the revelations are coming to us in jesus mighty name praise the lord Hallelujah. in the book of first corinthians chapter one and verse number 24 the bible says but unto them who are called both jews and greeks christ the power of god and the wisdom of god first corinthians 1 24 praise the lord but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. But unto them which are called, and you know you and I are called, praise God. So unto them which are called, Christ 
is the power of God. Christ is the wisdom of God. So when we are talking about Jesus to us, it is he is the power of God. When we are talking about Jesus to us, he is the wisdom of God. To them that are called both the Jews and the Greeks, Christ is the power of God and he is the wisdom of God. And we are talking about wisdom here. And so when we are talking about Jesus, we are talking about wisdom. And when we are talking about Jesus, we are talking about the word. Because the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Verse 14 of John 1 says, and the word dwell, I mean put on flesh and dwell among men. So when we are talking of Jesus, we are talking of the word. And the Bible says Jesus, who is the word, is the wisdom. So in other words, the word is the wisdom of God. The word is the power of God. And so when you imbibe the word, you, there is power of God infused into you. When you imbibe the word, there is wisdom of God infused. So it all has to do with the word of God. That is why I keep saying a Christian who has no regard for God's word is not going anywhere. A Christian who doesn't have time for God's word can never see victories. A Christian who doesn't make time to sit down with God's word will always struggle with the devil. Because the, when we are talking of power, it is the word of God. When we are talking of wisdom, it is the word. And it is all embedded in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, he is the wisdom and the power of God. God and in Isaiah 33 Isaiah 33 verse 6 the Bible says and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and strength of salvation wisdom and knowledge is what will be the stability of our time you want to be stable it takes wisdom and wisdom is you know a, a knowledge is the mother of wisdom. It is the revelational knowledge that gives birth to wisdom. And so wisdom and knowledge is the stability of our time. And so if you see people that are not stable, if you see people that are frustrated and running around and, 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 and they are being messed up every day, it is because they lack knowledge. It's not because the devil is strong. It is not because there are many devils or witches in their family. It is because they have no regard for the revelational knowledge of God's word. So they cannot be stable. They are blown about by every wind of doctrine. Anywhere they hear something, they have to rush there. Those are miserable, uh, miserable people in church. But until you have regard for wisdom and knowledge, you cannot be stable. So wisdom and knowledge is the stability of our time. Prayer is good, but prayer without knowledge results into frustration. Prayer without knowledge is praying amiss. And James said it, you pray and you don't receive any answer because you pray amiss. He did not say they don't pray. They pray all right. Probably they were praying from morning to night. Yet nothing was coming out. Because they were praying amiss. That is outside the word. Their prayer is not was not in line with God's word. It was not in line with God's principles. So God cannot answer it. Are you understanding me? And so when we are talking about wisdom and knowledge, we are not ruling out you know, prayer. But the point is that if you are going to pray to see God move, then the prayer must be based on the revelational knowledge of the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. As a matter of fact, people that are deep into revelation in God's word, their prayers are very short. Because they only speak the word out of revelation and God has to move. That is it. But people that don't know the word and they are frustrated and they are being beaten here and there by the devil. They, they, all their prayer is crying. Every day they are screaming, they are crying, they are screaming, they are crying, they are screaming. And, and they have funny, funny songs they sing to God for themselves. <laughs> I remember I once heard a song uh, that a certain lady was playing. And uh, he said, uh, Pastor, how do you find this song? <laughs> 